thank you. Uh, thanks, that, uh, that is way too kind. You know, we're here because we know that something big, something uh, different is happening in Washington and a lot of other places, but particularly in Washington. Uh, somehow we're uh, part of it. We're part of something uh, much bigger than I think we know right now. Now, I don't want to tell you what you already know. I just want to point out that it's this thing that's happening is not about politics, I figure. It's about governance, the way we run the country, the way I think uh, the whole world will be run at some point in the future. What we're seeing in Washington, I feel, is a new commitment to grassroots democracy. You know, we could call it we.gov, a phrase I like a lot. There's other phrases. But, you know, I'm an old guy, so I want to call it grassroots democracy. Not, uh, not in the hundreds or thousands, but in the millions and uh, much bigger numbers someday. This is a big deal to me. And again, it's bigger than all of us. We're part of it. And, you know, that feels pretty good. One other thing we're seeing in Washington right now, you know, and I've been stumbling around there myself a bit, seeing what's happening, is that we're seeing something new that's never happened before. We're seeing pragmatists, people working together who know how Washington works, who know the culture, who know how to make things work now and who know how to make things change, working with a lot of people who uh, basically are coming to Washington and know a lot more about the new technology. And we have a lot of people who are hybrids. Again, people who know how things work and how, could, how things can be made to work. And this entire combination is a really big deal and something that's never happened before. The deal is, is in my own terminology, basically what we got, we have nerds working together with wonks. And uh, backstage I accidentally uh, came up with the phrase nonks for the hybrids. We're going to have uh, Vivek Kundra, Beth Novak, and Macon Phillips speaking. You can decide for yourself who's the nerd, who's the wonk, and of course, uh, who's the nonk. That, uh, that, of course, that phrase now is hashtag uh, nonk. Please uh, humor me, or as uh, Mika has been promising, remember, it's hashtag uh, nonk. Mika wanted that very badly, so you know we have to make uh, the boss happy. But again, despite the humor here, this is serious. Something has deeply changed in Washington. Again, pragmatists, <coughs> technologists working together, and this is a really big deal. Uh, as John Hodgman says, we now have the first nerd administration. And in the sp spirit of the total loss of the dignity, which I'm passionate about now. Remember, the first nerd administration. And I'd like to leave you with the salute which the president has recently given on a few occasions. Thanks, folks. I appreciate your time. Oh, Craig Newmark, the man who travels with his own laugh track. Um, so good morning. Um, I'm really excited uh, to start off this morning with uh, the, the, the people who are making this change start to flow uh, from the top. Um, and you know, it's interesting to change from the top and change from the bottom. I mean, these two things have to go hand in hand. Um, I am uh, uh, going to hand the baton off uh, to Vivek Kundra, uh, who is uh, the United States first Chief in Information Officer. Um, and uh, he has an exciting announcement to share with you, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that to him, and then he is going to hand the baton to Macon Phillips, the White House's uh, new media director, who uh, uh, got on a train uh, very late last night uh, to make it here uh, and join us, and it's a real thrill uh, to have him. And so they're going to present, and uh, and then we'll uh, hopefully we'll have some time for for Q and A. So I give you Vivek. 
All right, great. Well, thank you so much for uh, having me. And uh, we're super excited to be actually making a, a, an announcement around how we're fundamentally changing the management of technology in the federal government. One of the biggest challenges that we see today in these tough economic times is how do we make sure that the investments we're making in information technology actually produce the dividends that, the, that were promised. The federal government spends today over $70 billion when it comes to information technology projects. Yet, everybody knows that there have been spectacular failures when it comes to information technology investments across the federal government. A perfect example is uh, the two years and $600 million that the Census Bureau spent on going with a handheld device that was supposed to turn around the way that agency operated to the point where the entire 2010 census would be done uh, in a paperless fashion. Yet, because that initiative failed, we reverted to a paper-based census. And across the board, we've seen system after system uh, reflected in, uh, in changes around requirements, vendors over-promising uh, what technologies are going to be able to do budgets that uh, have run away in terms of excessive spending. And yet what happened before, if you look at uh, the last couple of decades, in 1994 there was a report that said billions of dollars in IT investments are wasted. And last year there was a list that essentially said over $30 billion of IT projects uh, are in trouble. $30 billion of taxpayer money. That's unacceptable. And all we got was a list uh, that you couldn't really find much more beyond having a list that said these projects are in trouble. What the Obama administration is committed to is laying a new foundation when it comes to transparency, accountability, and responsibility, especially when we look at how we manage IT investments. To that end, what I'd like to do is introduce you to our initiative um, in terms of the IT dashboard. And what this dashboard is going to allow us to do for the first time, as we democratize data, as we make information available, we go to the golden source of that information. A big part of it is based on the foundation we've already laid around data.gov and the transparency there where you could find everything on every aspect of government operations from toxic waste release data to flight information from the FAA. And now for the first time what we're unveiling is this dashboard. And what you see here on a real time basis, we're gonna be providing the American people visibility into their tax dollars. So you could actually go here and say, well how much does the Department of Defense spend on information technology projects? How much does the United States Department of Agriculture spend on information technology projects and what is the health of those projects? The ability to actually go in here and click to the next level and say, well, let me look at the whole portfolio. And not only that, but also providing you with the tools, the ability to tap into the ingenuity of the American people to show us a better way to find the innovative path in terms of how we're making these investments available. We've built into this platform the ability to share how these projects are performing, how this portfolio is performing. We've also said, you know, it's not enough to just roll up information and make it available in an abstract fashion. We need to be able to go down to the, the deepest level in terms of data and information, the performance of these initiatives. So that you can go here and say, well, let's look at uh, how the Department of Agriculture is actually performing and specifically what's going on with some of these projects that may be in trouble. And actually providing accountability the way it's never existed before where you can actually see the picture of the CIO who's responsible uh, for the oversight of the projects. <laughs> there, the contact information so you can actually contact the CIO directly, provide feedback to us so we can see what it is that's happening across the board in terms of these investments. Also providing us the ability to say, well, let's figure out what were the original performance metrics of this initiative? What was promised? And which targets were met? Which ones were not met? And are they really monitoring the health of these investments? 
uh, going back further and saying, well, who are the prime contractors here? Who's actually doing the work? For the first time, making that visible, to be able to see here that you've got Accenture <laughs> that has won a $96 million contract, and how is this performing in terms of uh, the, the, the promises that were made when this award was made public? What are we doing in terms of uh, cost, breaking down the cost, not at a very abstract level, but you could actually see on a monthly basis how is the government spending money month after month and where are they on planned versus actual expenditures of that initiative. And looking here and saying, well, what about the schedule? How are we performing when it comes to the schedule itself? Are they hitting the targets? Are they not hitting the targets? What were the original plans as far as the initiatives were concerned? and asking you to help us in terms of looking at these initiatives and saying, does this really make sense? Is this the right path in terms of the investment that we're making? Uh, or can we find a better, cheaper, faster way of solving some of these problems? At the same time, we wanted to make sure we're also providing you with the ability to take this data and slice and dice it and mash up the information and help us analyze. What we're doing is we're basically saying, help us look at these investments. Now for the first time, the entire country can look at how we're spending money and provide us with feedback. You could come in here and say, how do you get the agency name? What, are, what types of uh, expenditures are happening actually in 08, 09? What's planned in the budget? Uh, and allowing you to actually publish it as an RSS feed, download it as a .csv file, this is the same data that we will be getting, and now you'll have the ability to, to analyze how we're performing. Is the data perfect? No. It, but, but by making this available publicly, a couple of things have already happened. Right when we announced that we were going to launch the dashboard, I, I talked to the CIO Council, and we saw the data change overnight. People started iterating and making information available and cleaning it up, knowing that we're putting it out there in the public domain. Uh, we saw when we did open houses uh, for the last month, we've had it for four hours a day, including Saturdays and Sundays. And we've had hundreds of people attend those open houses because they recognize that we require a new foundation in terms of how we're going to manage taxpayer dollars. We also are providing you with the ability to analyze and, and look at comparative analysis in terms of asking the questions. What's happening in terms of expenditures between homeland security and education? And where is this money being spent? Um, so you could spot potter, patterns and we could spot patterns and govern in a way that makes the most sense and divest from programs for, uh, that haven't produced the dividends we've been looking for for too long and invest in programs that are producing dividends. And you could actually come in here and analyze it in terms of whether you're looking at uh, infrastructure spending and compare it and look at where are, we, where are the investments happening from agency to agency, department to department, and run analysis uh, across multiple vectors and figure out what precisely is going on with the entire IT portfolio. We've also made available, of course, for the public um, Q and A's, but also looking at them from a video perspective, such as asking the question, what is the impact of launching a new agency like the Department of Homeland Security? And what actually happens when that agency is launched? And making it easy for people to see how we are analyzing some of this information um, and looking at the data to make more intelligent decisions. But that's not enough in terms of just making that information available. What we really need is help from all of you to look at uh, all these investments and to help us find the innovative path. And what you'll notice here, one of the things we did is we've said CIOs need to go out there and evaluate every single investment uh, when it comes to the performance, when it comes to does it make sense or not as far as uh, the investment itself or have technologies leapfrogged. There are structural challenges, of course, within the federal government where procurement takes up to 18 months to two years in some cases on these large IT investments. Yet Moore's law holds true, and you've already missed a cycle when it comes to innovation in terms of baking that into the culture of the federal government. But 
We believe that by democratizing this information, by making this data available, and this data is also available, by the way, on data.gov, what we're doing is we're launching a platform that will allow us to tap into some of the best ideas and the best thinking. And also what we've done here is we've actually looked at USS spending and we've said, well, how do we look at USS spending overall and allow people to search uh, procurements across the federal government in terms of uh, lo looking at uh, investments that have been made not just in information technology, but the entire United States budget. Making it as simple as saying, well, who is buying doors uh, in the federal government? And allowing you to slice and dice that information so you could see where specifically was there no competition. So you could click here and see all the doors that were bought within the federal government that were not competed in terms of the competitive processes. And in which states or which agencies were these doors bought and allowing you to process this information in a way that makes sense to you and I in our daily lives. Why do we need to continue to abstract the way we present information uh, to the American people? For the first time, making search as easy as possible and allowing people to see how their government is spending money will allow us fundamentally to change how we manage information technology, but more broadly, how we manage government and how we procure assets uh, across the federal government. But it would require everybody. It would require you, it would require us, one, to manage better, but for you to help us find the innovative path. And we look forward to iterating. This is version 1.0. We've launched it in beta. And we're going to continue to iterate, add more and more features. And I look forward to your involvement.